Although we normally tend to talk about the welfare of European citizens here on the EU Observer, today we decided to do something different and talk about animal rights, in particular wild animals in European zoos. Because believe it or not, there is a European Zoo Directive. It's been around since 2002, but seemingly most member states are not implementing it in the way that they should be. That's according to research from the Born Free Foundation. This week, having been invited by the Aldi MEP Bill Newton Dunn, Dan Turner from the Born Free Foundation is in the European Parliament to present a report on the implementation of the directive. So thank you very much for meeting me here for a coffee. And um, first of all, tell me a bit about what you've, what you've found out on your trips to the European zoos. Sure. Um, we've undertaken the most extensive project um, looking at zoo compliance and implementation of the uh, zoos directive across the EU. Uh, we decided to look at 21 countries of the 27, um, a total of 200 zoos, um, and engagement, and through engagement with the uh, governments of those countries, identified whether the directive has been properly transposed, whether the directive and the national law has been effectively applied uh, and enforced, and whether the zoos themselves are complying with those requirements. And are they? Um, across the board, uh, a, a lack of enforcement is the main problem. So um, what we're finding is that um, from the random sample of zoos that we have assessed, there is poor compliance. And um, that tends to suggest there is a lack of enforcement. And on speaking to the governments, that is very clear, that um, because the directive itself is two pieces of paper, there's no explanatory notes, uh, the requirements are, are, are very ambiguous, um, there's, there's no explanation. So for member states that haven't um, the previous knowledge of zoo regulation or knowledge of animal welfare or the expertise in their country, they have actually been unable to apply this law effectively. And so we're seeing poor conditions in zoos across Europe. Mm. And the Aldi Group is supporting this initiative um, today. You're gonna, there will be an event here in the European Parliament. Yeah. How long have you been supporting this initiative and, and um, tell us your emotions? Since Dan came to see me last year sometime, I think it was. It seems a very important initiative. Um, we shouldn't just look after human beings, but animals as well. And there is a rising tide among public opinion right across Europe that's saying we should be kinder to animals and look after them properly. So uh, I'm very glad to help. But money is tight now in the EU and member states are cutting down on their budgets. So where are they getting money to, to kind of invest in Well, that's true, welfare? but zoos are places for the public to visit. So there's admission charges and there may be private owners. But in any, any case, the law is the law and they should be either having a proper zoo or no zoo. But that, that's quite clear. Mm -hmm. and, and so um, I'm happy to support it. It's a hard job. Dan is doing an awful lot of travelling. It must be a very hard job that he's doing, going around like this. I think you said there are 4,000 zoos, you told me once in Europe. Yeah, it's an You can't go to them all. No. Can you describe a few of the images that you've seen? Like a few, have you seen any really gruesome bad cases and um, in what member states in particular? Yeah, um, um, there are the countries that you kind of expect there to be poor conditions purely because of... Um, lack of investment in the infrastructure of zoos. Um, so in the newer member states, um, you tend to find um, very poor conditions, uh, concrete floors, iron bars, uh, no uh, enrichment, no furniture, uh, no form of um, interest within the space. So it's just empty. And so as a result, the animals are very lethargic or they're uh, displaying abnormal repetitive behaviours, sometimes self-mutilation. So obviously as an observer, I mean I'm used to it, I visit zoos all around the world, but for members of the public that are, are not exposed to that all the time, it must be a horrific thing to see. Um, and, but then in countries where, you, where they have had the investment, where you're paying about 20 euros entrance for, for the visit, um, you would expect there to see fantastic enclosures with uh, things for the animals to do, um, vegetation, but unfortunately you're not seeing that. So despite paying the exorbitant fee to get into the zoo, uh, in some cases if you have a family you're talking near enough 70 euros, 80 euros for entrance to the zoo for a day. Um, unfortunately you're not seeing that investment in the animals, in the enclosures, ensuring the animals are well cared for. And I think now's the time we've got to be asking why. 
uh, because a zoo visitor is going there for a nice day out. They're not going there to support conservation or to be educated, never, you know, uh, per se. Um, so I think the zoos, uh, the zoos are expected to conserve biodiversity. They're expected to educate the public, but also they're expected to look after their animals. And I think the visiting public expect that of them. And so we need to see, we need a shake up of the whole system. And that's exactly why there is, of course, a European Zoo Directive. But do you think that it's, it's OK, this directive that we currently have, or do you think we should have another one? Does it need to be updated? I mean, well, the, the other one dates from 2002, if I remember right. So that's nine years ago. We've had more countries join, the new countries, as Dan has described. Um, the directive itself is somewhat vague, and, and, and there's a lot of detail that is lacking from it. So. It's very hard to get a new directive. It takes a long time. You've got to get 27 member states to consider their positions. So it's a hard thing to do, but maybe one day we ought to update this, the existing directive, yeah, and get better conditions. OK. Well, we'll just leave it there. We're going to leave you now with some images that Dan Turner um, has kindly given us to show you. Um, thank you very much for coming over for a coffee, Pleasure. Mr Newton Dunn and coffee. Mr Turner. <laughs> thank you.